to the Cat Cannabis Show, everyone. I'm your host, Cat Cannabis, and co-author with Dr. Larry Burke of Dreams That Can Save Your Life, number one in new releases on Amazon, uh, early warning signs of cancer and other diseases. Why we dream is still one of behavioral science's big questions, but our guests tonight are going to help us understand how we can live a healthier, happier life. You may have seen our expert healing panel tonight. Um, they're all authors on previous shows, and they were so well-received, we brought them back just for you tonight. I blog all the shows on Pathios and turn all of the shows into articles on BizCat360 magazine, and all these authors' shows were trending on Pathios, and the comments were so active in BizCat, I could hardly keep up with them. So let me go through and introduce you to our panelists tonight, our expert panelists, and uh, we're going to be talking about their work and how it can have the direct effect on your life. Uh, Dr. Jane Galloway is a visionary leader, recovery um, educator, and author of The Gateways. The Wisdom of 12-Step Spirituality. And she was such a huge hit on our previous show on January 8th. We have brought her back to share more spirituality healing of the mind, body, spirit, and their tools with you. Our next guest will be Reverend Janice Alexander Pyle, who is the author of Power of Ten, She blends the Old Testament tabernacle and the Kabbalistic tree of life and ties them all together using the golden rule to help everyone from Generation Z to the millennials to the baby boomers um, live a healthier spiritual life from the inside out. She was previously with us December 5th. Then we have Jim Phillips, who is the author of the key to life, living in full expression. And he's also an actor from the newly premiered movie, Becoming the Keys, when he was on the Cat Cannabis Show January 8th with Becoming the Keys producer Robin Jay, where he talked about his book, Key to Life, in her movie and with our audience. Jim is here tonight to help us explore how we have chosen to be here, to expand our awareness and experience ourselves. Uh, He will be doing a solo interview on February 19th, so don't miss it. And Scott Stevens is back with us. He's a journalist and author of Look Look What Dragged the Cat In, which shines a light on opioid addiction and addiction in general. Scott posts regularly on health and alcohol issues for online news services and is a founding influencer at the world's largest medical portal, Health Tap. He was on the Cat Cannabis Show December 12th. Welcome back to the show, everyone. Thanks, Cat. Honored to be here. Well, let's start with you, Dr. Jane. Is it okay if I call you Jay- Dr. Jane? Of course, of course. Okay, let's start with you. All of you have worked tirelessly to to help others, especially our audience, live healthier, more fulfilled lives. How is your book and your work helping you fulfill this goal? Great question. (laughs) You know, it's very interesting because we have a bunch of authors here together And I'm sure they will relate to the process of having a book write itself. Um, So, in fact, I wrote this book after many years of compiling notes and drawings and many of the Kabbalah, Sephira, and the whole, the Tree of Life, all these things. However, when it was time to write it, um, I just uh, put my uh, butt in the seat, as my writing teacher long ago said, and for three years it poured out. So um, I wasn't sure. I knew this was the book that needed to be written, but I wasn't sure who the audience was. 
Um, I have been uh, a recovery educator and involved with the 12 steps for many years, many decades. Um, uh, and, and, and I'm a minister, ordained minister, et cetera. But um, I really don't think the work is for people in beginning recovery. I have always seen the 12 steps that were kind of a channeled process within AA uh, initially as a literally a channeled developmental path, almost like a scaffolding or an organizing principle, much like many other psycho-spiritual paths. So um, I wrote the book. And I think, uh, you know, it it took about a year to begin to zero in on what I was really trying to get to. And, And what I was getting to with the work was this, that, in fact, many people in the AA literature, there's something that says AA is a bridge back to life. And what I have observed over the many, many years that I have worked that program and counseled and taught and et cetera, is that a lot of people camp out on the bridge and never get back into life. They bring their camping gear, their sleeping gear, and that's it. And I wanted to address this next stage recovery issue. Where do we go once we're back in our bodies, integrated in many ways weller than well, because the general society doesn't have to do the kind of work we have to do in order to stay sober and become this kind of rigorously honest person, et cetera, et cetera. But then a lot of people just define themselves by this illness model Mm -hmm. as opposed Mm -hmm. to saying, okay, wait, I'm weller than well, but what do I do next? How do I get a big enough tent to really support the rest of an evolutionary growth process as this person who I've become through working these steps? So I began to really understand that next stage recovery is is something that applies not only to people who have dealt with addiction, but who have dealt with being knocked down by anything. And that means every human. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, Can you hold your book up for us again so that we, because by now everybody's going, oh, I had to go get that book. And by the way, their websites are on the Cat Cannabis show page and also on Kathleen O'Keefe Cannabis author page. You can go there right now and click on them and go and get this book if you've already gone through the steps or if you're thinking about even going through the steps and need the next place to go. This is where you want to be with Dr. Jane Galloway's book, The um, Gateways, The Wisdom of the 12-Step Spirituality. So Reverend Denise Alexander Pyle, I'm going to ask you the same question because you have also worked tirelessly to help others live a healthier, more fulfilled life. How is your work in your book helping our audience get there? Well, it, what's interesting about it is, as you know, I was a divorce attorney for 42 years, going on 43 years. I still am counseling people through crisis situations. And I'm finding I'm giving them my book. And they're finding that the answers they want, living the Ten Commandments and really understanding what each of the commandments symbolize in terms of the spiritual structure of the universe and how they're a roadmap from you know, your from source to self to each other and survival on the planet and how to make yourself the best version of yourself in this lifetime. They're saying, wow, this is really helping me. And each time I help someone else, it's reinforcing my own yeah, you know, positive message for help. I mean, we're all light workers here. Everyone on your panel, we are all here as um, seeds, you know, star seeds, here to give the messages that need to be done. We volunteer to come here now. Like Jane, my book wrote itself. Life experience gave me the ideas, but when I actually sat down over four weekends, somebody else was was moving my fingers, and then. I came back to work by editing it. And therefore it, you know, and that's what took the hard part, making it not sound like a sermon, but into sound bites and messages that you could sit it on your nightstand and use it as a devotional message. Oh, but I love that. And that's really what I do. That's why there's exercises at the end of my book. Because Jane, as you know, the 12 step program might as well be the 10 commandments and the golden rule. Because the very first commandment is getting you to recognize your connection with God and that we house a crown. We are the temple that houses this 
you know, spiritual light. And we have to be very careful of what we put into this temple. It's and so true. it's really all the same. So, so hold your book up for us so we can see it again. The Beautiful pop- book. And you did, you did the artwork on that book, didn't you? I did the artwork on the book. It's the Tree of Life broken into two, the, the top five um, sphere out representing the first five commandments, the bottom mm-hmm. five representing the second five. And if you notice, if you divide the artwork and draw the lines, you have a Star of David in the first half and a cross in the second. I so love it. Accident. I love it. Thank you. So Jim Phillips. You are the author of The Key to Life, Living in Full Expression, and you just came back from the premiere in Las Vegas. How was it? It was unbelievable. We had an <laughs> extraordinary time. And, of course, I've never been in a movie before, so that whole process of being in a movie, making the movie, then going on a red carpet, and being interviewed the way that we were was phenomenal. Mm-hmm. And then, of course, seeing yourself on a screen that's as big as a house mm-hmm. was a little awe-inspiring. And, and, you know, uh, Robin sent me the link to the movie premiere and I saw you in there and your book does reflect very well in the movie. Your message is amazing. So I'm going to ask you to, you know, hold up your book again for us now so we can see it. And I'm going to ask you the same question you know you've worked tirelessly uh to help others living a healthier more fulfilled life how is your book helping you fulfill this when i think about the book it's not about me telling other people what they need to do or how they should do it it's more or less i can say there's guideposts in it 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 has 42 or 43 different quotes in it that were given to me when i take my early morning walks but what i I'm attempting to do, and I think it's happening, is I want people to start thinking and really thinking for themselves, checking with what they believe, why they believe what they believe, is what they believe true, is what they believe their own beliefs, which is an extraordinary thought to have anyway. But it's about recognizing that we're that we're not the person we think we are and mm-hmm. that as we move through life, I, in, in fact, what I've come up with is the purpose of life is the progressive realization of the truth. So the book is really about how do we get from where we are right now through this progressive realization to the truth, whatever that is. And in that process, we get to our own truth. And we do that, in my opinion, by by uh, experiencing divine love, joy, truth, and compassion, expressing divine love, joy, truth, and compassion. And then we are an expression of divine love, joy, truth, and compassion. So it's really all about moving through life, recognizing who we are and living from our truth. And because you were such an expert in this area, you were invited by Robin to to be one of the wisdom holders in this movie. And I I was blown away by by your wisdom in the movie. Uh, thank you. So Scott Stevens, we're we're going to ask you the same question. Um, and if you could, uh, is your book behind you, Scott? Um. Not on that picture. Uh, My my latest one is here. It didn't make the poster in the background. And uh, those are all your books back there, there. right? That's impressive. So look what dragged the cat in. And tell us, um, you know, you've worked tirelessly. You're a journalist. Um, How has what you have done in this book helped others live a healthier, more fulfilled life? Well, in each of the five books I've written, there's a, there's a thread about the health consequences of drinking a toxin and known carcinogen, alcohol, America's favorite drug. And in part of my recovery journey, and my recovery journey touches all five of these books as well, but uh, in part of that, I began doing the research. My history as a TV journalist, I uh, I was the one who researched all the hard stories because nobody wanted to read that much. And so I did the digging in each of these five books. Boy, I wish it was like Jane and Denise where these things wrote themselves, but I had to actually uh, really pull up my sleeves for two years on each of these books to look at what this drug does to you rather than what you think it does for you. And it's been a very eye-opening experience for not just the people who are struggling with the disease of addiction and the, the disease of alcoholism, but even the moderate drinkers, the family members around the person with the disease who think, I don't have a problem. I'm a moderate drinker. Well, is there really a moderate and responsible way to be drinking a toxin and known carcinogen? And this shows them quite quite clearly that this drug is tied to 60 different diseases, including cancer, implicated in eight different types of cancer, 
uh, one in five strokes is alcohol related. So I'm able to convey a message, not just to families that are struggling, not just to people like me who have gone through the disease of alcoholism or are challenging their relationship with alcohol, but also a, a more of a public policy and, and a, a health policy look at here's how you're going to live a better, longer life. And that is by taking this drug and not, not including it in part of your diet. It's not, it's, there are no known health benefits and there are quite a few known health detriments. Mm, thank you. You know, for our audience watching, all of these experts on the panel tonight have all lived their books. They have not just gone out and researched these books and then put down on paper what they read. They've walked the walk. They've talked the talk. And now they're sharing that wisdom with you, which makes this panel really profound. This isn't just a panel of research. This is a life panel that went through the gates of hell, came out the other side, and they're sharing their information with you so that if you are in a place that you are finding extremely challenging, their work can help you get through this time in your life. Um, I'd like to ask you quickly one last thought. I'm going to go through all four of you again. Um, what is one last thought you can share with our audience to help them through any challenges they may be going through right now? And let's start again with you, Dr. Jane. Well, I guess what I would say is keep moving. Don't get stuck on the bridge uh, and understand that a wellness model of recovery is a sustainable, lifelong, psycho-spiritual path. And uh, defining yourself by illness, I'm just a sick whatever, is, um, is not a holistic path, is not a wellness model. And so I would say get off the bridge. Oh, what a, that, that is a great thought. Um, uh, Reverend Denise Alexander Pyle. Well, I would share a quote actually from Carl Jung, which really reflects healing and love of yourself, which says, healing comes from that which leads a patient beyond himself and beyond his entanglement with ego. It's about getting beyond ego and connecting to your inner truth. And that's really how we get to be, you know, our purest version of ourselves in our in wellness. Oh, I love that. That is great, uh, Jim. I think a thought that I would would leave with, and it's it's something that I say every morning when I'm doing my walks because I want to set the tone for the day. And as I mentioned, I believe this is all about our coming to our own truth. So what I ask every morning is, what is required of me to allow that which I am to be experienced and expressed through me and as me? And then I wait for the response. I typically get an answer during the course of the day, something will show up, or I can look back on the day and see where that opportunity was given to me. And you do get an answer. It comes. Every day. I love that. And finally, Scott Stevens. There is a, a quote that has been a part of every book that I've written, and that is, what causes problems is one. And when you're looking at your life, when you're looking at your experiences, um, in this case, with all my books talking about alcohol, uh, you may not have gotten in trouble every time with alcohol, but every time you were in trouble, alcohol was involved. That should be a sign to you, a nudge from the judge or the wife or anybody near you, nearby you, you have to take seriously because it takes a lot of courage to get there. But when you're examining yourself and looking deep in the places we don't want to look at, we have to look at what caused the problem and arrive at the conclusion that what causes problems is one. Well, thank you, uh, everyone, for being on the show with us tonight. Uh, and a big shout out to Rachel, our producer. This show will be turned into an article on BizCat360 and will be in Patheos. So uh, I will post it on my social media page as soon as it is published by those publishers. And join us again next Tuesday for more great guests that will be tied directly into your life. Good night, everyone.